guys, welcome back, welcome back. Subbies and newbies, and just in case you don't know what a newbie is, that's anybody checking me out maybe for the first time. It may even be for the second. We don't count those numbers around here. I just want both of y'all to come on in, come on in, come on in. Okay, so for today, today we got a quickie. We got a quick update. Y'all know that I have been on this whole Dolce 2.0 where I am upgrading all facets of my life from the root to the tutor, from the tops of my head, well top, from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. We are making all around renovations in my life. So I just wanted to give you guys a little update on how everything has been going. And moving forward, I think I'm going to do it about maybe once a month, maybe by the end of the month. I think that's a good catch up time for us to really check in with each other. What do you think? Well, we'll see how that goes. But anyway, let's jump right to it, shall we? Well, first of all, I have a PSA. For anybody and everybody who uses the same shampoo that I do as far as the Garnier Fructis. You guys know that I use Triple Nutrition, the shampoo. It has the avocado on the front. Well, honey, let me tell you, I was in Target the other day because I had to re-up because I used all my stash. Do y'all know that they changed the bottle to the Garnier Fructis? Yes, they did, honey. They changed the bottle of the Garnier and I almost passed right by it. It used to come in a yellow bottle with the green pump, but it now comes in a green bottle with a green pump, which matches some of the other shampoos that they offer as well. So it was hard for me to distinguish. I had to actually read the bottle. So again, attention, attention, all shoppers. I just wanted to let y'all know, just in case you do use this, the nutrition, triple nutrition, and you see it does have the avocado on the front. They have now changed the bottle to green with the avocado on the front. And for all those who are not familiar, this is the shampoo that I like to use sort of as a first shampoo, sort of as a clarifying shampoo, if you will, because it's not too harsh, but it does the job. And it's for dry to very dry hair. That's what it says, but it's a very nourishing shampoo. I've been using it for quite a while and I love it. So that is the, that is the PSA for anybody who is interested. Honey, don't look for the yellow bottle, look for the green. Okay, so moving right along, those who have checked out maybe a couple of my, well, I guess the last video, or the video before that, or honey, anybody who's been peeking in within the last week or so, you guys know that I took a trip and I, I was doing a couple of things. So a couple of my initiatives were not, I didn't really keep up with them, which is kind of hard when you do travel. So number one, with regard to the water, because you guys know that I've been keeping up with my water. I've been increasing my water intake. It's good for your overall health. It helps your skin and everything in between. So while I was on the road, while I was away, the, the water sort of faded away. I didn't do what I needed. I didn't keep up. I didn't keep up with the scheduling as far as my water. Now I did drink some sparkling water, which is technically water, but as far as just water, water, just, just out the, you know, just plain old water, no, no fizz, no nothing to it. I, I think I may have had a glass and I was there for about four, four days. So I, I didn't do well with that. And you know that I have been walking. As far as my whole exercise regimen, it includes walking. Walking in the morning, it really helps to get my day going. And while I was away, I didn't, I didn't walk too much. I was at a hotel and I didn't really walk around the hotel too much outside of going from my room down to the, the lobby. But I will say I was active though, I was active in my purpose being there. So I was back and forth and I was doing walking with regard to that, but I didn't have like a set time or a time that I set aside just for walking and for a certain amount of time. And you guys know that I've been clocking my time on my watch and, you know, just basically getting in about a little over a mile and all that good stuff. And I didn't really do that, but we're gonna circle back to that 
in a second because I got I got some more to, to talk about with regard to that. So not too much walking as far as a set time and duration. As far as the food, you know, I'm not too bad with my eating. You know, I don't eat a whole lot of greasy stuff or whatever, but I will say that when I, you know, it's just hard to, to keep up with this stuff when you travel. When I was flewed out, I, well, I flew myself, so I don't want to make it seem like someone sponsored my trip. But when I got to where I needed to, to be, it was late in the evening, and but I was hungry. So I was going back and forth whether I should even eat because I try not to eat after a certain time. I try to eat pretty early, maybe about five. And then, you know, I try to be done around six, no later than seven. So with that being said, I landed way after that and it was pretty much midnight. So I was hungry. I was going back and forth whether I should even break my whole schedule of eating. And I ended up eating anyway because I didn't want to wake up with a headache and, you know, not feel well for the next day. So I did do that. I had a little something light so I could put on my stomach. I will say that my eating wasn't too great while I was away only because, not because of what I was eating, but because I wasn't really eating. I was more so concerned with doing what I needed to do while I was there that I didn't really take care of myself in that way. I did eat, but not in the capacity that I'm used to and not the way that I should have eaten. I didn't really eat breakfast. I ate a Pop-Tart when I got there. I'm not really into Pop-Tarts. They're not really the best for you. But I did snack, you know, I had some good snacks with me, but I didn't really eat, you know, my breakfast and the this and that and, you know, really adhere to my type of eating while away. So, bad dolce for that that way i did fall off on that but getting back to the walking even though i wasn't really on schedule with that i did do some squats this sort of ties into when i got back i, I re-upped on my water so i'm getting back into the flow of drinking my water I'm trying to get back into the flow of the walking. But honey, the weather is not cooperating. I don't know if y'all are up on current events, but out here in, in the, on the West Coast, it has been, I mean, it, we're talking monsoons, we talking hurricanes, we are talking torrential rain, honey. We are talking about all types of stuff. I even learned a new term, atmospheric river. That's just basically, again, torrential rain when a whole bunch of moisture is increased in the air and it just pours down. Mm -hmm. That's what we've been having over here. Not to be too dramatic, <laughs> but it's been weather of biblical proportions out here. I'm just trying to tell you. I'm just trying to say it has been quite action packed out here. So yes, the weather has been weathering and it's been hard to keep up with the walking. I mean, I went walking, I think once last week and it started raining while I was walking. You know, I can't play that. So I'm up here walking fast, trying to get back to the house. I already had my hat on or whatever, but that rain was coming down. I said, Lord, name of Jesus, please let me get home before it opens up and just pours all over me. And guess what? He held the umbrella, over the invisible umbrella over my head, honey. And I got home before it really poured down. Even this week, it's been raining off and on. So we'll see how the walking goes. But in the meantime, I have been doing squats. I have been doing, I'm, I'm gonna do some push-ups and do some other things that can work on the other areas of my whole physique and body and well-being. So with regard to that, as far as improvements, when I got home from traveling, you know what? I am really turning into a Trader Joe's girl. You know, I really am. Not only am I doing, I told you guys about the chia bowl that I've been eating. I even tried their waffles. Mm, the Belgian waffles. I mean, chef's kiss, really. So while I was in Trader Joe's and I was re-upping on my chia bowl, I looked at their vegan sausage as well. It had my interest peaked. It really did. So anybody who's had those, let me know what y'all think. I didn't pick them up that day, but I, I've been thinking about them ever since I left the store. So the next time I go to the store, I probably will pick that up. Again, just trying to do healthier versions of foods that I already eat, because I do like sausage. Just trying to upgrade 
my palette as far as getting more cleaner, more lighter, more healthier options. So I'm doing some changes. That's all I'm trying to say. I'm doing some changes. And one of them, like I said, was the sausage. Now I've had meat alternatives before, including the sausage and some of the stuff, you know, just don't it just don't taste good. You know what I mean? Some of it tastes like plastic or it tastes like rubber. And it, it just, you just figure, let me just go with the original meat version because this one is not hidden. But just based on all the other things that I've tried from Trader Joe's, I am pretty encouraged that this sausage, it's a breakfast sausage, will go in the way of the chia bowl and the pizzas and the other things that I have tried from Trader Joe's. Oh, and speaking of another thing that I tried from Trader Joe's, I also tried their stir fry. They have a package of vegetables where it's just, I think it's red onions and asparagus and mushrooms and, and maybe white onions as well, honey. Fab! It was absolutely fabulous, tasty, good. I mean, I, I mixed that up. I put that in my ground turkey. I, I just had, I had a field day with that. So that's another thing that I have tried from, now granted it is vegetables, I get it. But at the same time, the combination that they had together with the asparagus, I thought it was pretty cool. I thought it was pretty cool as a stir fry and uh, it was very good. And we're gonna get more into the foods, you know, I'm gonna show you guys what I've been eating. From time to time, I put pictures up on Instagram of what I have prepared or cooked or eaten or whatever, whatever. And I think we're gonna, we're gonna go that way as well as far as on some of these updates. As far as skincare is concerned, yes, we're gonna check in on the skincare. I have a thumbs down to report. Mm -hmm. Now, some of y'all know, again, those who have checked in with me before, you guys know that I tried the MAC wipes, the MAC makeup wipes. I like their original versions and I used to get it at a, it's called the cosmetic, the cosmetic company store, something like that. But it's basically where you can pick up a lot of products that are under the Estee Lauder banner, if you will. And this would include their old versions of the MAC wipes, which used to come in like a silvery gray packaging. Long story short, they no longer sell them. They're all out of those. So I went to MAC and I picked up their new version, which is the micellar wipes and they come in the pale pink packaging. And I must say, after using them for quite a while, I'm I'm not really a fan. I don't really like them. I prefer the oil-based version of their wipes. And what I've noticed is when I take off my makeup, especially under my eye area, I feel like my face is drier, almost like I'm washing my face with soap twice, meaning using the wipes to wipe off the makeup. And then when I wash my face, it just feels extra dry. And in the under eye area, you know, that's very sensitive. You know, it's not as thick as far as the skin as the rest of your face. And it can easily wrinkle, get crepey and this and that and so forth and so on. It's just a very sensitive area that we need to be mindful of and be gentle with. When I first started using them and I noticed that I put a little Vaseline under my eye just to sort of compensate for the dryness. I, I'm pretty much over it. That's my whole point. I'm pretty much over these wipes. I don't particularly care for them. They don't really work for me. So I'm going to stick with the Burt's Bees, which is also the micellar. Okay, so this is micellar rose water that I told you guys about. It's not as drying. And even while I was traveling, I got the travel size cleansing towelettes by Target. Again, this is just a pop and go uh, version of it. I like these a lot. So nay for the Mac and yay for the Burt's Bees and the Up and Up. Okay, so last but not least, I know that we sort of dabbled in the makeup. We're going to get more into the makeup, okay? I'm just, I'm just letting y'all know we, we're going to do some more things. And uh, one of those things that we're really going to talk more about is the makeup. But in the meantime, I wanted to show you and tell you what I've upgraded as far as my, my, my makeup, my foundation, the base on which everything is built as far as the makeup. 
As some of you guys may know, I, I like Laura Mercier. I use her tinted moisturizer. I did a video where I used it and I show you how I use it and everything else and all the accoutrements that I use in addition to. So with that being said, one day I was minding my own business and I was on the Sephora website and I had a couple of dollars to spend. And I looked and I saw what I have heard about for years and years and years. And I just never pulled the trigger because I said, well, I kind of don't need it. I got a lot of makeup. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should. Honey, I pulled the trigger and I bought it. I have to tell you, I'm so glad I did. Oh my goodness. I totally get the hype. I really do. Now, before I get into what I bought, I'm going to tell you what I used to use. Oh, how quickly we use the past tense on this. So as all my makeup girlies know, when you put on your foundation slash tinted moisturizer, you want to put powder on top that helps to absorb any of the oils that your skin is going to secrete throughout the day. And you know, that can muddy your whole look and you know, basically unbeat your face after you done beaten it with makeup. We, we talk about makeup. So anyway, I used to use the Clinique. This is the Stay Matte Sheer pressed powder. I've had this for years. I, I barely made a, a dent in it, but I normally don't wear makeup every day. But I was just curious and I said, you know what? I heard a lot about this stuff and honey, I picked it up and I'm sorry, but Clinique, it, it, she's going to have to take a back seat. We just, we're going to find her another job because Laura Mercier, she done took her position and, and she is permanently placed. And I am talking about the Laura Mercier. This is the translucent translucent setting powder and this one is in medium deep i have the medium deep and again all the makeup girlies have been talking about this for years this is nothing new this is a staple for a lot of people who are into makeup you hear a lot of names being bandied about when it comes to certain things and laura mercier always pops up as far as the setting powder Honey, I, I'm in love. I really am. And y'all let me know if y'all want me to do an official review of it. But I believe it's very finely milled. So when you put it on your face, it's just it just smooths everything out. And it doesn't look chalky. You know, for a lot of us who are browner and are darker, we have to be careful with the powders because it can make us look ghostly or chalky or ashy or off. And for a long time, it was hard to find a good powder, let alone foundation or anything else to match our skin tone. So when this came out, a lot of people jumped on it and I do see why. It does not leave a cast or a ghostly cast and it doesn't fall apart. It pretty much held up all day on me. In fact, it did, you know, not pretty much. It actually did, you know, cause sometimes powders, they themselves break down and you have to redo or reapply or repat or whatever, reposition. And I didn't have to do that with Laura Mercier. Now, again, this is the winter time. So I know summer will be another test for it, but Right now, in the cooler months, everything is holding up with this Laura Mercier. So with that being said, I just wanted to show this to you guys real quick. This is not a, an official review, but y'all let me know. Again, let me know if you want me to do that because I will do that. I will talk about this until the cows come home because this is, it's official. I totally get it. It is totally official. I'm wearing it right now. So this stuff is, it's pretty good. So in the showdown of the Clinique pressed powder versus the Laura Mercier loose powder, we have a winner and that is the Laura Mercier loose powder. Yes, it is the champion. She is the champion, my friend. <laughs> Yes, Laura Mercier, she 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 knocked out Clinique uh, and she is now a staple in my makeup lineup. Oh, and just one other thing. You know, I've been updating you guys on my sleep cuz sometimes it's it's really it's been rough. I have been getting more sleep. I can honestly say that I feel better for it as well. It's been really good. I've been getting about 7 to 8 hours where before, I might be getting five, I might get six, which I'm good with six, 
but it's always good to have more. So I've been getting a lot more sleep on the road or when I was traveling, it was, it was kind of iffy. But now that I've been back, I've really been doing things as far as scheduling time to get things done earlier so that I can go to bed earlier and really get a restful sleep. So I'm so happy about that. I don't know if you can tell. I mean, naturally, I'm just a bubbly, you know, personality. But now that I've gotten more sleep, honey, watch out because I'm going to be bubbling all over the place. So the three takeaways we can take from this, this particular ketchup is that I have improved my sleep. I have changed out the wipes and upgraded my makeup. So that is the update and that is the uptick. That's basically what I've got to say as far as this week. And like I said, I think what we'll do is maybe we'll do this. We'll, we'll do it once a month, but maybe at the end of the month. And I've been thinking about doing some other things, maybe going live and maybe we can catch up live. Y'all let me know what y'all think about that because I'd love to talk to you guys about some of the stuff that you guys are trying and this and that. That way we can get our rapport on, okay? The, the one-on-one, uh, well, one on, you know, with whoever shows up and really talk about some things as far as improvements and maybe some other things you know it don't always have to be you know about that we could talk about some other stuff you know so according to my list I, I i think we're just about done what do you think i think i think we are so we are going to get up out of here we are all checked up and checked in so now we're about to check out so that wasn't too bad right we were in and out okay I want to thank you so much for dialing in and showing up. I really do appreciate it. I really do. I really do. And we will definitely be back talking about some more stuff. So I need y'all to come back on in here for, for some more stuff. So you got to come back for that. So you already know. It's going to be the same Dolce dial. It's going to be the same Dolce channel. So you come on back. All right.